here we are in my favorite spreadsheet and what we're going to do here is show how the real world, the so-called continuous world and the discrete world inside a computer differ. Now remember from high school your formulas S equals UT plus a half AT squared and V equals U plus AT. We're going to be using those and uh, remember how one is the differential of the other, one is the integral of the other? Hmm. Yeah, so we're going to compare the uh, continuous integral with the discrete integral and of course the discrete integral will come up wanting. So here we are in our simulation. Uh, in Under the blue headers I've got two columns in which I'm going to use to record time. Under the green columns, uh, the real world, real acceleration, real velocity, and real position. Uh, now acceleration and velocity in this example are going to be the same inside uh, the computer. No pro problem there, no worries. Over in under the brown columns, I'm going to record uh, the amount of movement within each frame, v times delta t, and I'm going to accumulate that uh, the way we do in, uh, say, uh, a video game. All right. So let's set our dt to 1. And uh, I'm going to take uh, this value and propagate it through the rest of the columns. I'm going to go for 25 time steps. And of course, I can mess with this later. So let me start out at time 0. And in each time step, make the current time equal uh, the previous time plus the current time step. So if I propagate that, it should count 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 25. There we go. So that's dt and time. Let me set my acceleration to be constant. So I haven't mentioned any units. Time can be in some unit. Could be units of, say, 10 milliseconds in a frame of animation, perhaps. Uh, acceleration, likewise, we think of it as being unitless, or rather, having an abstract unit. So it's 10 uh, units of space per unit of time squared. Hmm. If you want to be concrete, call them meters per frame or something, meters per second, whatever suits you. Okay, so I'm going to make this acceleration constant throughout for this example. Now, in the real world, velocity. We'll start out with zero velocity at time zero. Then we'll say uh, in the real world v equals u plus a t if u is zero, so v equals a t. Velocity equals acceleration times time. Alright, velocity equals acceleration uh, times time. Hmm. So let me also, copy this in all these other cells. So let's do a quick sanity check. Velocity equals acceleration is 10, time is 25, velocity is 250. Yes. Cool. Now for the real position. Uh, let's say we start at a position 0. And we remember the s equals ut plus a half at squared thing. Well, u is 0. So uh, it equals a half a t squared. So here we go, equals 0 0.5 a half times the acceleration times the time squared times time times time. All right, so here we go. Copy that into all of these cells. And uh, we find that after, say, 25 units of time, we've come 3,125 units of distance in the real world. And meanwhile, in our computer, we're uh, bound by this dt. Every dt time units, we uh, are allowed to compute the current position. All right, so let's say we say, well, okay, in uh, time step one, 
how far have we traveled? Let's say it equals the uh, velocity in the current time step times um, the length of the time step. Or well, actually, we don't know the length of the time step yet. It hasn't happened. So, say we'll use the previous time step just to be sure. And we'll start with a, an initial velocity of uh, zero, of course. All right, so uh, we're going to go v times dt, which is always going to be 1. Okay, so let's copy this and paste it further down. That's the amount of distance we travel in each animation, uh, frame of animation. So quick sanity check here at time 16. So we select this column here at time 16. Um, we're traveling at... 160 uh, units per time step for uh, one time unit. So one time, yeah, okay, that seems good. Now let's accumulate um, v dt. That is, we'll sum all the v dt's up to this point. So start out with zero. We'll set this one equal to the previous one plus this one. So our to total time traveled, uh, say in this time, is equal to the sum of the total, uh, sorry, total distance traveled, sum of all the total distances plus the distance in the current frame. So let me copy this just down to here a second. The uh, total time traveled is the time traveled up to now plus the time traveled in this frame. 20 plus 10 is 30. Okay, cool. So let's propagate this down to the end. And um, yeah, so in this frame we've traveled the 3,000 units travel up to the previous frame, plus 250 is 3,250. So it's all internally self-consistent. However, notice that this distance, 3,250, is different than this one, 3,125. So where have I gone wrong? Well, actually, I haven't gone wrong. This is right. Unfortunately, this is a, con a, uh, a discrete simulation of... Um, a continuous world. So, yeah, of course, it's never going to quite match. Now, remember the uh, differentiation, integration thing, the area you know, under the graph thing? Let's take a look at that for a second. Let's look at the real graph. So, on the bottom axis, I've got time. On the uh, vertical axis here, I've got velocity. Velocity starts at zero. And, uh, yeah, I've got a constant acceleration, so the velocity will be a line here. Now, the distance moved will be the integral of velocity over time, i.e. the area under this line. So it'll be the area of this triangle here. Okay, cool. That's in the real world. But in the discrete world, we've been summing these little distances. So what we've been getting is a sum of these small distances over time. We've been acting as though velocity was uh, constant during the current time frame, but it's not. It has changed. So clearly this summation is not going to give us the real area. It's close though. It's like, uh, yeah, that's how we get this uh, relationship that uh, integration is the limit of this sum as the time periods get smaller and smaller. So um, if we could get these time periods small, this would get more and more accurate. We get it more and more like the real world without, of course, actually being able to get there.